Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to XPS Tech. I'm Vineet and the new version of Fedora Linux, one of the popular bleeding edge Linux distro, was out last week. The latest version is Fedora 31. It's a distro that I have not covered since long and frankly deserves a lot more coverage. So in today's video, we'll check out the latest version of Fedora Linux, the new features introduced with the release and also talk about the Fedora system in general, looking at the reasons for its popularity and where in my opinion it falls short when compared to other popular Linux distros. Alright, so let's begin today's video. Fedora Linux is a Linux distro sponsored by Red Hat. It is developed by an independent community showcasing the latest bleeding edge technology for Linux system that eventually make its way to the popular commercial Linux distro from Red Hat called Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So Fedora in a way serves as an upstream source to RHEL. Fedora Linux is quite a popular distro and has a huge user base. And as per Wikipedia, that includes Linus Trowalls, the creator of Linux kernel. Earlier versions of Fedora Linux used to release in three variants, that is workstation, server and cloud. But from Fedora 30 onwards, Fedora has added two additional variants and renamed one. Core OS replaces Fedora Cloud and Silver Blue and IoT are new Fedora variants. IoT is tailor-made for Internet of Things devices and Silver Blue is made for industries and developers who used container-based workflows. So following this trend, Fedora 31 has five variants. Now to use Fedora on your personal desktop or computer, you download the workstation image from Get Fedora page. The installation image size of Fedora 31 is 1.8 gigs, which is pretty standard for a Linux distro. Note that there is no 32-bit image available. Fedora has dropped the support for 32-bit system and now installation image is available only for 64-bit systems. Now, as far as installation process is concerned, it is pretty standard Linux install. The Anaconda installer has a clean menu with minimal and simple options. It starts with language selection menu and there are basically three options, two of which keyboard and time and date is automatically selected based on your hardware and network. Hence, you need to choose only the installation destination and start the installation. Once the installation is over and you restart the computer, you get this greeter application that lets you set computer username, password, online accounts, etc. And once you enter that, you are set to use the Fedora system. Now, unlike other popular Linux distro, for example, Linux Mint or Ubuntu, Fedora is a bleeding edge distro. That means that all the softwares are of latest version. Hence, Fedora 31 runs on Linux kernel 5.3 and GNOME desktop version is 3.34. And if you want the best and pure GNOME experience, I think Fedora is the best Linux distro for that. There is no third party apps or customized themes or menus like in case of Ubuntu or Manjaro. This is GNOME straight from the GNOME project without any modification or customization. Hence, the desktop is very smooth and super responsive and everything works without any display issues, which you usually find in highly customized distros. Fedora does come with many pre-installed apps, but most standard apps like text editor, LibreOffice suite for word processing, photos, videos and audio player are available. And you can always install your favorite apps from Fedora repo using the GNOME store application. All right, now let's check out some of the new features introduced in the latest version. First is the new background menu in settings app. The background chooser has a fresh new design where it now lets you choose the background for both desktop and lock screen together with just one click. The applications menu gets a new feature where you can now group apps together and create a folder of apps. This is a new feature in GNOME, but we have seen this in other operating systems and is quite useful. So it's good that now it's available for GNOME users as well. Apart from that, Wayland is now the default display server for GNOME on Fedora 31 instead of legacy XOR. Wayland is the latest display server that is not only secure, but there's also improvement in overall efficiency. The default web browser on Fedora 31, Firefox also now runs natively on GNOME Wayland. Now the other big technical change is the migration from control group version 1 to control group version 2 which is called C group v1 and C group v2 in short. Now Fedora is the only Linux distribution that comes with C group v2 enabled by default. In very broad terms C group or control group is actually a method to organize 
processes hierarchically and distribute system resources in a controlled and systematic manner. So this allows the operating system to provide dedicated memory and CPU to process independent of other running processes. The advantage is that a single process cannot interfere with other processes and bring down the entire system. It basically brings the concept of containerization of processes that we usually see in servers to the desktop operating system. So Fedora with the release of version 31 is the first Linux distro to move to C group version 2. Apart from that, many other applications like Perl, Node.js and Python has been updated to their latest version. Alright, now let's talk about few reasons where I feel that Fedora falls short of being the best Linux distro. First and most important is there is no availability of long-term support. Every version of Fedora is supported only for a maximum of 12 to 13 months. So you need to upgrade your system after every year, which I don't think many businesses and users in general are happy to do. The other main reason is the package manager. Since Fedora belongs to the Red Hat family, the package manager used is RPM or Red Hat Package Manager. And there are not many Linux distro that uses RPM. Majority of other popular Linux distros like Mint, Ubuntu, Elementary, Zorin, etc. are from Debian family and uses Debian packages and apt package manager. And when you move from one distro to other within the same family, the learning curve is a lot easier. And for that reason, when a Linux user switches to Fedora, there is a learning curve which not very people are willing to go through. Alright, so that was all for today. Being the first distro to adopt C group version 2, I think Fedora deserves a huge applause for this release. They are moving ahead and getting future ready and I really appreciate that. So if you want the latest and greatest of Linux distro with pure GNOME experience, I highly recommend Fedora 31. And if you are a user of Fedora, don't forget to write your experience and what you feel about the distro in the comment section. I would love to hear from you. Alright, so that was all for today. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, kindly press the like button. If you have any suggestions or feedback regarding the channel, which content you want to see, kindly mention that in the comment section. And a huge shout out to all the subscribers of XPS Tech channel. Thank you for supporting me. And once again, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time.